Peel Island off the coast of Brisbane, Queensland is a serene beauty. But for over 50 years, this remote paradise was a prison. In 1907, this island was designated as a quarantined hospital for those with leprosy, a so-called lazaret. Hundreds from the mainland were sent here in exile for a life sentence, with over half dying in isolation. Since closing in the late 50s, many of the unique buildings have fallen into disrepair. Yeah, look, it's been totally eaten by termites. It's just mud now. Well, it's deteriorating on a daily basis, basically. Yeah, exactly. The only thing that's keeping it is the roof. The majority of the buildings are a death trap, too dangerous structurally for people to enter today. So, this group of architectural and robotics researchers are developing technologies which will at least help to preserve the buildings digitally. We're doing laser scanning of heritage buildings on Peel Island using a lot of different kinds of equipment, as many types as we can get. Meet Hexapod. This six-legged beast is designed to go into buildings too dangerous for humans. With nimble limbs, this lightweight bot should traverse all types of terrain. Now there's another leg. Yeah. There's a screw loose. Hmm. Well, it is a work in progress. The team are developing ways for the hexapod to feel the ground around it and detect for itself if the floor is safe enough to walk on. In the meantime, this bot, Anywheel, has been built from the ground up with rapid redesign in mind. So it's all completely modular. Um, we can redesign and re-respect the robot in the field as we go. With this particular setup, we should be able to generate a, um, a real-time map as the robot drives through. Depending on what kind of wheels you want, you can quickly assemble. For example, if you had another system, you could just take off this wheel, put in another wheel, depending on the room condition, and you're good to go. And of course, they've got a drone. Equipped with a rotating LiDAR sensor, the team is using it to autonomously quickly scan the island from above. I'm covering this whole clearing here in, I think it was 14 minutes, and that'll have all of this area mapped from above um, to walk it and capture all the low stuff. I reckon you're probably looking half an hour, 40 minutes, maybe longer. Technology really allows us to capture a changing fragile, remote, degrading site really quickly, which is incredibly important because it's falling apart before our very eyes. This is an incredibly rare example of inbuilt racism in architecture. There weren't many lazarets in Australia, but this was the only example of segregation in a lazaret, and so it's really important to understand the story and acknowledge the story as part of our history. I can't imagine sitting around here for 30 years trapped here on an island. Walking around here is really quite eerie to see how people were forced to live in these conditions, you know, against their will. And you can see the inequality straight away between how the whites lived in their purpose-built houses with their nice patios and a, a lovely sea view and how everyone else, the, the non-whites, where they had to sleep and stay, sometimes four or five to just a shed. And they were just uh, galvanised iron. Um, government didn't really take too much notice of, the, of the, uh, the Aborigines. We need to look down into the ground now, into the cemeteries, the ground penetrating um, technology there, um, because we we don't know how many people are buried. We don't know who they are, but uh, it would be nice to know just how many and where they are too. Leaving the island, I feel that I've experienced a little of what it was like to live there. And the team want to share that experience with others. They aim to present their findings in virtual reality, 
to educate new generations about this part of Australia's past. Separately for the robotics researchers, the hope is that the know-how learnt here will improve smart adaptive bots used in disaster relief in the future and perhaps one day save lives.